Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is Patrick Malejac. I am the Secretary General of PIOC, the World Road Association. Welcome to our sessions on the virus COVID-19. This is a discussion session between PIOC members, which means mostly world administrations, world authorities, operators, and related industries. The session is beginning now and it is start scheduled to end in about an hour and a half. For the record, uh, you are all muted and all cameras are turned off. Uh, if they're not turned off, please make sure that they are. Uh, you may, of course, ask questions, raise an issue or share some information with everyone. If you want to do that, please use the chat feature of the software we are using, which is called Zoom. Uh, it is, we found, at the right of the main menu bar, which currently I think is not at the bottom of your window, but more at the top of your window. Uh, if you want to share some information, you can send it to all participants. This is the best option. This channel on the chat is monitored by our colleague Christos Kisnofontos, who is the chair of one of our IARC committees. He will note the questions, and when the Q&A session comes, he will raise those questions with the relevant panelists. For the record, the session is being recorded. The resulting video will be shared with participants and within PIOC. A very important disclaimer, Time is of the essence. We are living a crisis. Knowledge and practice that will be shared will probably not have been officially approved by each country's official authorities. This means that the ideas and examples that we share here are for illustration only. They do not necessarily represent official policy. Ideas presented will be subject to further evaluation and they will be used in deriving recommendations on policy and practice in due course. Care has been taken in the preparation of this material, but no responsibility is accepted for any damage that may be caused. The concept here today is to focus on the short term. The world is going through a crisis and every day counts. Sharing knowledge and current practice between PIAC members urgently is what we want to do in order to support responses to the pandemic in near real time. Such knowledge and current practice are not yet confirmed as valid or effective, and what works in some parts of the world may not be relevant elsewhere. This is something we are very familiar with in PIARC, and in particular, we are very, very mindful of the differences between low and middle income countries and high income countries. And different parts of the world usually behave differently. However, it is our belief that inspiration can be found anywhere. A good idea now that you would identify could save lives, could help you improve business resilience, and could help you minimize disruption of services. For the record, in parallel, IARC is planning medium and long-term actions for when the pandemic is in a manageable state and substantially under control as well. But for the time being, we are focusing on the short term. The agenda and structure of the session is as follows. I will guide you through a brief introduction to the association, PIARC. There will be a, a moment on issues faced by road operators and administrations. Then some of our committee chairs or secretaries will share with you best practice from existing PIARC reports. Then we will have a country presentation on the current situation. Three countries, Italy, Spain and then Japan. For the last 30 minutes of this session, we will be able to discuss freely and to address questions that you may raise in the chat. And we'll conclude around 2.30 Paris time today. Our speakers today are myself, the Secretary General, Secretary General sorry, of PIARC, the World Wealth Association, Mr. Yukio Adachi from Japan, who is the chair of our Committee on Disaster Management, Savayo Palchetti from Italy, who is the chair of our task force on road infrastructure and transport security. Mr. Jose Manuel Blanco Segara from Spain, 
who is the secretary of our committee on performance of transport administrations. The session was organized by myself and a couple of, of other dedicated colleagues, Christos Genofantos, Jose Manuel Segarra, Jonathan Speer, Yukio Adachi, Valentina Galasso, and Savario Palchetti. You will notice that Christos and Valentina are not speakers today, but they were instrumental in organizing the session and they will be involved in further sessions in the future. Let me just start with what is PIARC. And the picture here is actually me, in case uh, you are wondering who is speaking. But what is PIARC? PIARC is the new name of the World Road Association. We were founded 110 years ago, more than that actually, as a non-profit, non-political association. Our goal is to organize and facilitate exchange of knowledge on all matters related to roads and road transport. You can refer to our strategic plan on our website, for example, if you want to know more about our activities. We have four key missions. They are here on the screen. Uh, we want to be a forum and to offer a forum for analysis and discussion of any issue related to roads or transport. This is what we are doing now, actually. We want to identify and disseminate best practice and give access to the best international, international information. We want to consider in our activities the needs of, the needs of low and low income countries, sometimes called developing countries. And we want to design and promote efficient tools for decision making, such as HDM4, a software that some of you may know, or Cura. Uh, for that, we mobilize the expertise of our members and our experts. And our operations are guided by a four year plan. And the new plan has just started this year in 2020. Uh, about the virus, we have identified a number of issues that are faced by road operators and administrations across the globe. Uh, I'm going to, to run through them uh, so that you know that it's important to structure our ideas, our issues. And this will also be very useful during the discussion session later uh, today, and also when we prepare documentation and reports from PR to be shared. That will come later. The first issue is, just like in the organization, you need to ensure your employees' health and safety. In general, in particular for customer-facing staff, such as people who work in toll booths, for example, or people who work uh, uh, on night shift. Also for staff working in offices and staff working in other facilities or on the road itself. Uh, when there's an accident, for example, now how do you deal with that? And how do you guarantee your employees' health? when they take care of an accident. Issue number two that we have identified is you need to maintain activity and business continuity with limited human resources available. Also when some staff are required or advised to work from home, which is not the normal situation in many cases. You also need to support employees with high risk concerns with chronic health or people with autoimmune diseases, et cetera or when a proportion of the workforce is forced to sell, isolate, or is sick. There are also indirect impacts, such as school closures, and parents need to stay at home to take care of their kids, and that also has an impact on, st on staff morale. Similarly, you need to prioritize between essential and non-essential activities, which is always extremely complicated. There are opportunities for maintenance, maybe, during this period, there, when there is low demand, if you have the staff and material, of course. Uh, you need to think about the kind of technology you want to deploy, such as teleconferencing, and that you want to deploy now. Some of us uh, may not have planned for that, so how do you adjust? And it's also essential to maintain strategic links between ministries, road administrations, operators, and supply chain partners. Issue number three, no, three, sorry, is that this pandemic has an impact on transportation. Many of you are facing major decreases within and between many countries, countries as regards transport. It's important, even essential, to maintain critical links and to ensure the essential flow of goods while regulating movement of people. There are cancellations or reductions in public transport at the same time. So how do you ensure the critical flow of goods. You can use verbal uh, message uh, systems 
to give advice against making non-essential journeys. There are also wider economic uh, impacts, such as reduced greenhouse gas emissions, reduced pollutions, and also, um, less positively, uh, reduced travel has also resulted in lower revenues uh, from uh, gasoline taxes and fares. This has an impact on your income. Another impact on transportation is you may be required to check uh, uh, whether any limitations on the maximum number of people in vehicles uh, are enforced. Uh, you may be required to check whether appropriate services are provided to freight uh, transport, transporters and buses. Issue number four is about business relations. This means relationship with supply chain partners, contractors, and small to medium-sized enterprises, SMEs, including their own business continuity planning and execution. You need material, you have providers, you have contractors. Are they still working? Uh, you may be required to support businesses, especially solvent or essential ones, so as to make sure that they are still around or after the crisis. You need to be very careful about the contractual provisions of all of your contracts. Concession contracts are a peculiar case. They are usually quite complex and they are still in full force. And you will be required to deal with added costs and delays. Issue number five is about customer and stakeholder relations and joint working. You need to provide timely and accurate information from the user perspective, from the world user perspective. You need, you need to take coherent and effective actions across a collection of complex public agencies. You need to balance technical planning and delivery with directives from civil authorities who are mostly concerned about public health at the moment, which is normal, but it's a challenge for all of us. And you need to manage relations with the media and you need to be able to, sorry, to communicate key messages properly. Issue number five is security. We have seen an increase in cyber attacks over the last couple of days and weeks in some countries. You also need to be able to deal with changes in roles of frontline operational staff. Are the new staff, if there are any new staff, properly trained? And you basically need to maintain security in the face of increased access to teleworking employees. Everyone is using new tools. Suddenly, is that secure? And of course, as usual, it's a crisis. Road agencies and road operators maintain relationships with emergency services, the army, the civil defense, etc. So these are the broad six categories of issues that we have identified at PRC and that we wanted to share with you. Next moment of our uh, session today is about sharing best practice from existing PRC reports. As you may know, uh, we have experts and we have committees. Currently, we have about a thousand of international road and road transport experts from different backgrounds, different fields, many different countries, of course, who are involved in our PR technical committees. They share knowledge and eventually they prepare reports, outputs, seminars, webinars, and, and conference and sessions. All those reports are available as PDF files that you can download from our website. And they are all available for free. You just need to register on the website and then you can download the PDF files. To give you an, an, a rough number, over the cycle 2012-2014, so four-year cycle, we published 40 technical reports. Of the, the recent one, 2016 to 2019, which ended with the World World Congress in Abu Dhabi last year, we published 46 new reports. And they are all already available from our website at PR.org. I invite you to go and check. Some of those may be very relevant to you. Some of those are very relevant to the current situation. The link at the top of the screen here um, directs you to a specific page where all those reports uh, uh, can be downloaded from in a very easily structured way. You can see here that we have reports on disaster information management for road administrators, security of road infrastructure, risk management for emergency situations, and security of road infrastructure, and many, many more. Uh, now, uh, I would like to invite uh, our colleague uh, Yukio Adachi from Japan to present uh, this uh, uh, report. Yukio, can you, are you in a position to turn your microphone on? Thank you, Patrick. 
My name is Yuki Wadachi. I'm the chair of the Technical Committee 1.5, Disaster Management. Uh, I will explain the, uh, our uh, honorable uh, the report named the uh, Disaster Information Management for Road Administrators, published in last year. The currently, the uh, coordination and the cooperation in the information management is the fundamental part of the uh, emergency management. So this report covers the, uh, a lot of case studies related disaster information management techniques in internally and also the uh, externally. This report does not cover the uh, uh, information management in the uh, uh, pandemic situation, but uh, I believe that yeah, this report will help you in your pandemic management. Next slide, please. Okay, thank you. Next report is the uh, name of the uh, risk management for the uh, emergency situations published in the uh, 2016. Uh, this uh, report covers the uh, excellent case studies, not only the uh, ordinary large scale, uh, ordinary scale disaster, but also the uh, large and combined disaster, including business continuity planning against natural disasters. This report also does not cover the uh, pandemic situation, but I think the, uh, this report will help your business continuity planning in, the, in this kind of the uh, pandemic situation. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Yuki. Now, yep. Yeah, Saverio, may I invite you to present this yeah. report on security of road infrastructure? Thank you. Uh, my name is Saverio Parchetti. I'm the chair of the task force on uh, uh, road infrastructure and transport security. This is the figure and the front page of the uh, final report that was edited in, 19, uh, in 2019. Um, as you can see, the content uh, starts from a, a general principles of a security-minded approach and, um, the, and the, it, it concludes with the technical and operational recommendation to protect against uh, a, a wide range of uh, threats, physical, cyber, and uh, cyber uh, threat, uh, cyber uh, threats. Um, uh, pandemic was considered as a threat, uh, unin unintentional, non-directed, non unpredicted, but reasonably uh, foreseeable um, and there are also some appendices where uh, for example were considered were considered the, the, the effects of, uh, of the dirty bomb in a urban area and uh, uh, which is uh, similar to what happened with the creation of red zone and uh, uh, um, or the lockdown of, uh, of transportation in, a, in, a, in an area uh the this report uh was based next slides this two slides please yes was based on the previous report that was produced in 2015 uh which which uh, it, it was uh, uh, um, a report uh, that make a wide range of uh, um, information on the state of art in uh, in in security and provide also some uh, information uh, and uh, good uh, references uh, to go through to the experience experiences that are uh, were made in the different countries that's finished for my yeah, for, for you, the moment <laughs> thank you Seva. you Patrick here again uh, so this was a short presentation of some of our reports uh, now we move to the, I mean, the main part, I would say, of our session today, which are three presentations about the current situation. Bear in, my, bear in mind, please, the disclaimer at the beginning of our presentation. This is what is happening in three countries. It may not work in your country, but we believe it can be good inspiration. Our first presenter is 
for this session is Saverio from Italy. Saverio, may I invite you to uh, start Thank your you. presentation? Thank you. I come back. Um, uh, the, uh, the task force, the new task force, uh, which is now uh, working on road infrastructure and transport security, will be a two years work uh, uh, to be developed uh, and finished uh, in 2022. We have at the moment uh, 13 members, seven corresponding members, and uh, uh, overall uh, 15 countries involved. The main goal uh, of uh, the activity of this task force is uh, embedding security into other 15 uh, infrastructure and transport related topics. Uh, that is, uh, they are uh, technical, PR technical committees and uh, task forces. As I um, previously mentioned, uh, pandemic was considered as a threat. Now we will introduce uh, the aspect of pandemic uh, in uh, uh, this recommendation. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah. Uh, a short overview of what is the situation in Italy. Um, First of all, the coordination of the response to COVID-19 was given to, in Italy to the Civil Protection, Protezione Civile, that is a department under the Italian First Minister competent uh, on all general natural hazard and crisis uh, uh, and management uh, uh, in consultation with the Parliament. Uh, ANAS uh, uh, company uh, as a national road administration and other private uh, motorway companies, as in Italy we have private motorway companies, and also railway companies are consulted at the national board for crisis management and uh, in order to be relation to all the level of, of administration, uh, which is really essential in this moment. Um, as you know, uh, it's uh, first of all, it's a sanitary emergency uh, um, that is uh, uh, involved also strong consequences on roads and transport exercise. At the moment, the mobility is allowed only for buying food, health and work and to reach uh, our, our own resi uh, residence or, or, or home uh, or, or activities are not considered, which are not considered essential by the government are locked down and only uh, production, transport, marketing, and delivery of medicine, and health technology, and medical surgical devices, as well as agriculture and food, food products are allowed. Uh, one main consequence uh, is that um, uh, the developing of the security department in, in uh, the road administrations, they need to be created and uh, all further strengthened to coordinate a response inside the organization. Um, some relevant consequences are the necessity to protect the operative personnel uh, working uh, on, on site, on, on, on the ground, on the road, and the new safety and the health equipment um, on, the, on the on board service vehicles. Uh, next, please. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, it's also I, I want also to point out other relevant measures uh, um, set up at the governmental levels level. Um, special funds and new procurement law are needing. Um, they need to be uh, imp implemented to ensure uh, rapid and quickly supplies with the appointment of the ale commissioners and uh, at uh, all the levels. Uh, we have commissioners at the regional and uh, both natural national levels. It's the same situation as uh, we had for earthquakes or be disaster. Uh, smart working was activated extensively and in particular for road administration. Um, they need uh, they need a totally new regulation uh, at uh, uh, for the, the developing the function at the central and territorial uh, level. Um, another relevant aspect are the simplified procurement for purchasing digital devices in order to uh, uh, be able to develop smart, smart working. And um, yeah, that is some, a, a path that is now uh, uh, very widely uh, used in the, uh, in the public, uh, Italian public administration. A new technology are officially requested um, and uh, 
some from the security point of view, some of this technology can be a risk and can be a very early evaluated for the aspects under the aspects of the individual privacy and also the profiling of the uh, smartphone users. Uh, finally, new cyber threats appear. And it's a very, it's a, a very important point. The Ministry of Interior informed us of what happened. Two kind of things are relevant. Uh, first of all, um, communication on the web for the protection of health, that uh, con uh, which contain uh, computer viruses. So we have to be attention to discharge any PDF that is not very well. Uh, control and uh, also we have to be careful to on uh, about websites um some phantom experts that uh, are telling that they are capable to uh, to give you information and but at the same time they can steal contents uh, of the computer and ask for a ransom so pay attention on this aspect finally uh, I want to, to put in evidence some relevant initiatives uh, at the level of the Innovation Ministry of Italy. Just in the last uh, weeks, or last, uh, you can say uh, you can see here the Digital Solidarity Initiative. That is a campaign to get uh, companies and publishers to provide free services at the in, uh, for in the webs in the in the internet services. Um, to help people work and study from home and to develop a smart working, smart working um, uh, widely. A second fast track procurement for public administration is something uh, uh, that uh, need to be uh, implemented to facilitate in order to facilitate process for all public administration to acquire uh, essential goods and services. Uh, in the 20th of March, we activate uh, uh, the use of the, uh, the, an invitation uh, to companies and university, public, public and private bodies, uh, research center, association, cooperative, and, 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 etc., for the use of new technology useful for monitoring and containing the virus. And lastly, in uh, the 23rd of March, uh, a call to use of new technology to fight uh, COVID-19. Uh, it was a three-day call for contribution to support the Ministry of Health and our Superior Institute of Health in, collabor in collaboration with the World Health Organization to identify the best digital solution av available for telemedicine and home care application for patients and for active monitoring of the risk of infection. Thank you. I complete my presentation. Thank you very much, Saverio. Uh, for those who are wondering, this is recorded and will be shared later. And let me also remind you that you can ask questions or, or share ideas or, or whatever you want through the chat feature, which is available from the right button uh, in the Zoom menu on top of your screen. Our next speaker will be from Spain, uh, Jose Manuel Blanco uh, 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 Segala, will present the approach and measures taken in Spain in response to the pandemic concerning the road and transport sector. Jose, Jose Manuel? Let me check whether you are actually. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, very well, thank you. Well, Good morning, everybody. Well, my name is Jose Manuel Blanco. I try to speak in with not too much Spanish hard accent. Well, during 44 years, I've been working in the National Road Administration, and currently I am the Spanish speaking secretary of the ACTCAE1. Can you next slide, please? Uh, Patrick? Uh, thank you very much. Well, my presentation is rather long. I've tried to put all together the information. I'm only going to remark several ideas that I think will be useful, especially for the countries who are starting to think on how to react. This slide presents the, the summary. The first step is the declaration of a state of alarm, or whatever the name given in your countries. I think that in your country, in a country, they are thinking on the state of alarm, perhaps this information will be useful to include 
in the state of alarm measures, uh, what we need in the road and transport uh, sector. Well, you have, of course, this, to designate the competent authorities and in between these authorities, among these authorities will be always somebody from the transport and road sector because we are an essential service. Well, there's the question of the subnational jurisdictional levels because the day by day work, it must continue, but of course, within the framework of the national government and others and collaborating with the uh, security forces. Well, then you need measures regarding activity of the population, economic, social, and circulation. All the means of circulation, not only by vehicles, but also by walking or whatever. And then there is a mission for the, well, MIDMA is the acronym in Spanish for the, our Ministry of Infrastructure, well, of Transport, uh, Mobility, and Urban Agenda. Well, and then you have to think of the passenger transport and the drivers, that's very important because we have no drivers, we have no transport. Goods transport and the drivers, movement of the people, the population, and the administrative activity. Many of our organizations have a lot of work uh, due to the administrative, what we call papers, papeles in Spanish. So that's something we have to think about it to stop them and be focused on what is important. And then our personal, the road personal offices and headquarters, the road person at the field, at the road, what happens with our road works and maintenance? And finally, the economic considerations regarding the contracts, contracts of road works, of maintenance, concessions. What happens with it? Who is going to, build, to pay the bill? That is a, so this is a discussion we have now ongoing. So let's accompany me to this travel of ideas. Please, next slide. Uh, Thank you. Well, we have an overall, an overall joint mission, of course, but let me to the bottom of the slide. Measures being adopted are being published and broadcast as widely as possible through all channels, seeking its knowledge by all the public, promoting with transparency as much as possible the trust in such distressing hours. People is very confused sometimes. We need to give all the information with a lot of transparency. Next, please. Well, we had declared that uh, on the 14th of March, we declared a state of alarm. Uh, affects all individuals in the nation, all roads, all means of transport. And we have declared uh, under the direction of our president, four ministers uh, as main authorities. Defense, interior, our ministry, transport, mobility, and urban agenda. And there is a fourth one, health. Because on health, uh, the first, first one have their own competence and they work on them. And health is working on health and all the rest of ministry, whatever decision they must have related to the pandemic, talk with the health and if it's approved, then it's published. Next, please. Well, we are a Mediterranean country, so very accustomed to bureaucracy. Well, of course, we have decided that the ministers are empowered without the need for administrative procedures. We cannot waste time in administrative papers, so we try to move as quickly as possible. And the agents of security forces and corps, including the army, can check all persons, goods, vehicles, etc. And it's the duty of the citizens to collaborate. Most of the population is collaborating quite well, only some some points and small problems that are very well known. And here the social media is a very useful tool because the first day some people do not believe in these measures, but the social media, the Twitter or whatever, Facebook has published these silly people who do not obey. And now the population is looking at it like a something that we must obey. And also that's on national judicial levels, as I said, they had to maintain the daily operations, but of course, in the framework of the orders of the national authority. Next, please. Well, regarding activity and mission, as the saying in Italy, uh, Patrick Malejak and Saverio have explained very well the, the main issues and what, how, what are the main points. I'm not going to insist on this, but of course, in my country, all kind of educational, commercial, hotels, everything is closed. 
and is forbidden to circulate, but individually, only if you are company, elderly, children, dependents. So the question of our ministry is to ensure the mobility when it's not forbidden for, for people, transport, and, and for also for goods. Next, please. Well, what happens with the private or public mass passenger transport? Well, medium and long distance, we are reducing the offer very quickly. Not only the frequency of the traveling, but also how many people can be in every vehicle. Nowadays, is around one third maximum. Excuse me? No. Uh, please, everyone, mute your microphone. We're not going to answer any question now. Thank you. Well, for short distance, well, of course, uh, there is every city, every main city has its local reality. Uh, we have to have a special attention to peaks and valley hours. But the idea is try to discourage unnecessary travels, try to keep people separated among them. It's rather difficult. You need to study day by day, but we are, we are getting it after the first days of some confusion. So now things are going quite well. Uh, and what happened with the passenger transport vehicles? As I said, it's reduced to one third, and we have to protect the bus driver. If they are not protected by a bad head, then passenger will use the, not use the front door, but the back one. The problem is when some buses, people must to pay directly to the driver. So that's why we are trying to discourage using physical money. And regarding taxis, only one passenger maximum, but exceptions. Next, please. Well, uh, regarding good transport, the main problem in Spain these last days has been the drivers. This morning, it's not including the presentation, there is a new standard, a new regulation, deciding that uh, in every province we have now several hotels are considered essential service, and they, they are converting some kind of uh, service area. They have to attend the drivers and also the workers because another problem that afterwards we insist in it is what happens with the workers of railways, roads, sanitary. So many workers are moving in the country trying to keep the economic moving on and there are no hotels if they are closed. So in every province several hotels are now open just for them, not for the general population. Well, that's the, uh, we said we need some, we have provided several measures thinking on the truck drivers, for example, service areas, fuel station, logistics center, must facilitate then the toilet facilities, the catering. The, uh, the, the toll roads must keep open their service areas, and the, all the public owned service areas in toll roads or in not toll roads, whatever. What happens with the driver qualification cars? Well, that they are expiring. Well, they are extended. And what happened with a vehicle leasing establishment? Well, now they are allowed to remain open for professional freight transporters. Now it's considering to extending. Please, next. Um, the, it's the Minister of the Interior, not the Minister of Trapo, who decide when to close down roads for different reasons. In this moment, some small towns or buildings are already blocked. Now we have to collaborate with them in case. What happens with the administrative activity? We have a lot of it. Well, it's suspended most of the procedures and we are trying to avoid uh, use and sending of paper documents. But of course, we have to continue moving the documentation regarding payment of employees and of companies. Next, please. And regarding our own personal, well, we think in personal in offices and headquarters and afterwards personal in the field, at the road. Well, the critical or priority positions and functions must be always connected. And in addition to the high level management, management of course, um, the supporting units, think on the security, information technology, communications and building maintenance. They are also critical. We need them. But most of the employees in the headquarters and office 
can do their work and no presential work from their homes if we are prepared for it. And the, those employees whose functions are not critical and they cannot uh, do any uh, non presential work, like drivers of official cars or ordinance or whatever, they keep at home and only they will go to the office if the head of the office needs them for something special. So now what we have closed the public service and regarding the registration, the official registration, we're trying to close most of them all this or only open several hours coordinate, but through coordination with the registration office in the government delegation that we have in every capital of, our, of the province of our nation. Please, Ness. Well, regarding road wells and maintenance, well, this is the question now because many association companies, association, professional association are asking the government to sus the suspension of all kinds of works. That's something that is now under discussion. The key concept in this moment is that the pandemic is a public health problem. It's not a specifically one in the workplace. The same rationale for suspending works could be used for suspending, for example, a supermarket that is giving food to the population. So companies in this moment do not have to modify their health and safety plans, but just incorporate in their protocols the instructions and criteria coming from the National Health Authority. And well, of course, in they have to discuss then the protocols with the subcontractors and autonomous personnel, especially if they are sharing facilities. In this moment, roads and railways construction works are continuing in Spain, of course, with reinforcement of preventive precautions. But in some cases, we have some problems due to the lack of supply of some materials or regarding accommodation of food for workers. That's why this morning in the Official Gazette have published this, this instruction regarding hotels. Some hotels must keep open just for these people. Well, some municipalities by themselves have ordered a halt to the public works, but not to the private ones, because that's rather confusing. Uh, surely they have not decided to stop the private ones because then they could lead to a very high economic complaints and a better day. And what happens with tender and awards? Well, as I said, administrative procedures are suspended. So it would be logical that the public procurement platform should not publish suspension of each one of them because it could block it, just only which ones continue for certain reasons, because some hours are continuing for national reasons. Next, please. And regarding works, uh, road works and maintenance, well, uh, for us, we, it's essential, of course, the vigilance of the road, the primary attention to accidents and incidents, the communications, the tunnel control, and the winter maintenance. In some regions on Spain, but in the state, we do it through private companies, but the sound regions uh, uh, is due by people of the own agency. So that's something also we have to keep in mind. We have to keep the same instruction to the public uh, workers and to the private companies workers. Of course, we reinforce that all kinds of pre precaution measures, tries to reduce human things, divide into a more, disinfection, etc. Please, next. And well, here is the problem we have now, the economic consideration regarding the suspension of contracts because, well, the contractor, uh, if the contractor wants, he may request the suspension and extension of the deadline. And if he's not responding within th five days, it must be understood that the claim has been rejected. What happens if the suspension is approved? It's approved because, well, the authority considers that uh, uh, they must have stopped. Then the contracting authority will have to pay the damage, but only the following ones, salary expenses, 
maintenance of the warranty and insurances, rental or maintenance of machinery or installation assigned to the control that cannot be used for any other purpose. But there is also one last measure, and it's important. Only if the contractor are up to date with the social and labor obligation and the payments to subcontractors and suppliers. Next, please. Well, uh, I, I have a, a large one just say thank you very much, and, and that's all from Spain. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Jose Manuel. Uh, for everyone, if you want to ask a question or to raise an issue, please do that in the chat because you will not be invited to speak, right? This would be very difficult to manage in this webinar format. So if you want, if you want to speak or if you want to raise a question, if you want to ask a specific question to a specific speaker, please do that in the chat feature of Zoom. You can do it now. This would be a good idea. Our next speaker will be Yukio Adachi from Japan, and he will have about 15 minutes to present the situation in uh, the Hanshin Expressway Corporation. Yukio, thank you. Thank you, Patrick. My presentation is not long as the uh, 15 minutes. I ended it shortly. But yeah, anyway, my name is uh, Yukio Adachi again. Uh, I'm the chair of the uh, Technical Committee 1.5 Disaster Management of this cycle. And now I'm working for the uh, Hanshin Expressway Engineering, Osaka, Japan. Hanshin Expressway Engineering is the subsidiary company of the Hanshin Expressway. Hanshin Expressway is the major highway companies in one of the uh, major highway companies in Japan. Our company is the uh, uh, front line, the company in the road maintenance and the management. So today I will talk about the, uh, our case study the in business continuity plan and action in our company. So compared to the previous two presentation, mine is very different. So my presentation is uh, just focus on the uh, 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 front line company. Okay, next slide, please. First of all, I would like to talk about the uh, current situation in Japan. Geographically says the, uh, our country is very close to the uh, China and very far from the uh, Europe, but the, uh, our situation is very different from the uh, China and the Europe. The uh, left hand side of the figure shows the uh, uh, infected patient and the time. Our inf infection patient line is shown in the blue line. The yellow line, purple line, green line, blue li uh, green line shows the uh, uh, countries in the Europe. Uh, compared to the uh, countries in Europe, uh, our uh, infection numbers are still low compared to Europe. So uh, right hand side, uh, the table shows the uh, our confirmed uh, COVID-19 cases in Japan. Uh, this is the statistics of the year uh, uh, this Monday. Confirmed cases is the uh, uh, 1100 around that this number and uh, died is the number is the uh, 41. So our case is very different from the uh, uh, Europe and the China. So, but the, uh, now I think the, uh, we are facing the uh, overshoot of the infection. So I can say that the, uh, this is the time to prepare something and take action against overshooting. Okay, next slide, please. The current, current governmental action is shown here. I'll show some uh, three dots. All schools are asked to be closed during March, but no stage of the emergency or lockdown operation as of now, encouraging staggered works and the teleworks to prevent rush hour congestion. And no encouragement 
to the traffic. Currently, impact to the road business is around 10% down in traffic in our Hanshin Expressway. So next slide, please. In order to continuous road management action, we introduce the business control action as shown in this table. Now we are in the phase of two. We are encouraging staggered works and teleworks, and we are preparing phase three. Phase three means the, uh, we have the infection in staff and the family. In that case, we introduce the uh, staff streaming and the work shifting for the minimum office and the road operation. That means the uh, half of the staffs stay home, half of the staffs work at site. So, uh, so this is the only way to keep our vital road in good condition with minimum staffs. Okay, next slide, please. So, road business continuity in disaster is the management technique under the uh, all available human and material resources. But uh, in this kind of the uh, business continuity in the pandemic situation is uh, different. Road business continuity in the pandemic is the management technique under very limited and restricted available human resources. So, uh, we need a new business continuity technology against this kind of the uh, pandemic thing, situation. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Yukio. Uh, thank you. Mm. I would like to thank all of our presenters. And now we move uh, to the question and answers uh, section of our session today. It is going to be moderated by Christos Zanofontos. He will introduce himself later, actually. And uh, Christos will pick questions from the chat and will direct them to some of the speakers. Christos. Uh, not sure we can hear you, so let me see if we can. Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. Good. Thank you. Thank you so much, Patrick. Thank you very much to our presenters for pulling this uh, together so quickly. Um, thank you for you for being here and I hope everybody's staying um, safe and healthy. And uh, thank you to the people who work to organize this uh, so quickly. So um, the first question I'll actually address it to our three presenters and uh, we can go with uh, Italy, um, Japan and Spain will go alphabetical for this one and it comes from um, uh, Cote d'Ivoire and it's in the responses to the pandemic in Italy, uh, Spain or Japan, what specific actions were successful and which ones are irrelevant or should be avoided? I know this is a very loaded question, so um, you know, just uh, at least some of the ones that you have seen working and some of the ones that you have seen uh, uh, not working. Saverio? Yes, I'm, I'm here. Okay, so the, this first question was uh, to the three presenters. So we'll start with uh, what specific actions were successful and which ones are irrelevant and should be avoided that you have seen in Italy. And when we say actions, these are really actions taken by road authority, not necessarily by government in general. Uh, I can say you that uh, we are now uh, monitoring uh, that the trend of uh, infection uh, can be can be stopped. Uh, but we can say that uh, the trend seems to be stable now, uh, since the measures are in, were implemented uh, ten days, fifteen days ago. But uh, we are still waiting and we are very, very uh, uh, careful to say that uh, uh, the situation is going better. But we are, we are optimist, but we are very careful. 
Thank you, Severio. Um, Yukio, um, from Japan, what specific actions were successful and which ones are irrelevant or should be avoided? Now we introduce the uh, staggered work system and uh, this system works very well now. But the, uh, at the beginning of the uh, infection, uh, our brother company, uh, how can I say brother company or brother corporation, Nagoya Expressway had the uh, experience of the uh, uh, shutdown of the uh, toll gate because of the uh, uh, toll collectors have uh, infected. So this may cause of the uh, shortage of the uh, uh, toll collectors. So they closed the uh, uh, toll gates for uh, two weeks. But the, fortunately, we have no infection right now. So our business is going well now. Okay, is that Thank you, works you well? Yeah, thank you, Yukio. And uh, Jose Manuel, I'm for Spain. Well, in Spain, thinking on the road and transport sector, I think the best measure taking is thinking in mass transport uh, of, of people, of individuals, is try to keep people separated in the metros, in the buses, in the trains, or whatever reducing, not, not reducing the number of vehicles and the frequency in the rush hours, and promoting, of course, that teleworking. Now, most of the people in the national administration, road administrations and whatever, is trying to work at their homes. That's the best. And to keep in mind the parents of the drivers, the drivers of trucks, and the drivers of, of buses, the drivers, and how to can move workers from their cities to the countryside for working and they need to eat and they need to a hotel some place to sleep that's the the point that you have always keep in mind sorry can you hear me yes yeah. So um, the next question I am going to address to Valentina. Valentina is one of the organizers that helped put this together and is the chair of PyArc's TC 2.4. And, um, and so Valentina, what kind of specific ITS did you use to fight COVID-19 uh, in Italy? Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, well, let's say that, uh, as Saverio said during his presentation, the governance of information and processes and all the procedures that are put in place and this kind of situation is fundamental. So the uh, all the systems that all the road or transport companies have are um, uh, are cooperating one another through the Protezione Civile, which, we, which it means that the information is it's been delivered to the end users thanks to uh, specific procedures decided and um, agreed on uh, from a very specific board uh, that has been formed at Protezione Civile, which is a crisis management board. Uh, the basic ideas that has been used is uh, try to uh, communicate the information about restriction uh, through uh, variable message signs. That's the first measure that has been put in place. And then uh, all the um, traffic management situation uh, has been uh, governed by the plan and procedure put in place straight from Protezione Civile. Let me also say that in Italy, uh, just to finish, the all we are uh, we are, we need to be prepared according to the guidelines for of Protezione Civile uh, to any kind of emergency. So basic procedures and basic instruction are already in place before any kind of emergency. Of course, the pandemic it's quite different, but we need to stick to that plan. I hope this answered the question. Are you, are you with us still? 
Uh, I lost you for a moment. Did you hear me through the old answer? Yeah, Valentina, I think Patrick here. I think I did. So, uh, why Crystals is connecting back, it seems. Uh, we have a question for our colleague from Spain. Can, can I can I add oh. a, 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 sure. a word, a, a sentence, Saverio? Uh, yes, please do. And then we'll move, yeah. we'll move on. I would like only to, to say, to tell that uh, uh, the traffic on the motorways uh, at the moment is reduced by 50%, and the traffic on the national uh, roads uh, in Italy are reduced uh, in some parts also we uh, at the seventy uh, percent. And especially in weekends. Yeah, traffic now is very low. And uh, okay. only to, to say you that one of the consequences is the reducing of uh, a, a strong reduction on in, in, in road traffic. Christos, I'm not sure, sure we can hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. So um, what I am going uh, to do, there is a number of questions relevant to the continuous of infrastructure work uh, during this time. So I will try and bring them all together rather than ask um, a similarly uh, phrased question three different ways. So uh, with less traffic now on the roads, uh, do you consider to continue renovation works as per plan? And, um, you know, and do you have, what problems have you faced if you are continuing do you have problem with contractors, workers, and a shortage of workers? Uh, if you have agreed on suspension of works or an extension of time, how did you go about it? So I know these are very long questions. So um, I'll ask our um, you, you know panelists, uh, starting with uh, Saverio, and telling us specific to infrastructure works. How are you addressing them during this period, Saverio? Is Saverio on mute? Yes. Yes, Saverio. Saverio, you seem to be on mute. If you could unmute your phone. Maybe start with another person. Okay, so I will do, we'll ask the same question from Yukio then. Uh, during this time, are you continuing with renovation works as per plans? And uh, what issues have you been facing um, during the renovation relative to availability of workers? Uh, or if you have decided on suspending the works, uh, what um, protection do you put in place for the, uh, you know, for Hello, the can agency? you hear me? Can you hear me? Saverio speaking. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I, I can answer that the big uh, work yards are uh, still pro progressing, uh, while the, 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 the smaller one uh, have problems of, uh, of, of uh, um, supply chain. Of the supply chain, uh, they have problems, so they probably they they have to stop because they they have no materials to to go on. And uh, could we un unmute Yukio, Patrick, please, um, to see how they are dealing with this situation in Japan? I think it's okay. Okay. Yukio? Yes. Okay. Currently, Japan uh, is the, uh, uh, not in the emergency situation. So now everything is normal. So every action is normal. So every renovation work, construction work, maintenance works, go as, uh, as usual. But uh, once we uh, are in the uh, emergency situation, uh, declare the uh, emergency, we are going to minimize our maintenance work uh, with the uh, minimum staffs. So uh, we now we uh, prioritize every maintenance work 
what is the essential work and uh, what is the uh, not so essential work. And uh, we are now planning uh, about the uh, our, what is our minimum but essential work. Okay. Thank you, Yukio. And Jose Manuel. Can you hear me? Yes. Well, in Spain, in this moment, uh, as I said before, in the state, all our railway works and road construction works are going on. In some cases, there are some problems of materials or, uh, uh, or as I said, problems of hotel, resting or food for workers in the countryside that now are going to be resolved. But there is a social problem, that's something that perhaps we have not talking already. This session is the social media, the telling the story. In the population is looking at the TV, in the radio, and in the internet, so many sad stories, so many bad situations, that many people have so big a threat that uh, honestly many people think that we must stop all kinds of works. And some other people they say no, because as I said, this is not a problem of health in the workplace, it's a sanity, a social, uh, more general problem of health. And many people think that if you have in the work enough uh, preventive measures, don't, usually you don't have problems. But anyway, it's a problem we have now. In, in, the, in conservation, in maintenance, already the maintenance, we're trying to reduce it slowly but always trying to keep the vigilance of the road and to primary attention to incidents and accidents. So in this moment, some uh, subnational organization has decided to almost stop uh, the conservation, only a few things. And as I said before, some uh, council towns have decided to stop their public works. So, but in this moment, in this moment, the situation is we are working, but many voices are arising, asking to a general stop, and then put on the table the problem of who is going to pay the bill. That's an important question also. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Jose Manuel. Um, the next question would actually be to Jonathan uh, Spear. Uh, Jonathan is a member of TC111 and the work group leader for, um, uh, you know, for, for many cycles now as part of um, the performance of transport administration's um, various committee. So the question to Jonathan is, how can automated vehicles help reduce contagious contacts in person or in freight transport? Uh, <clears throat> hello, can, I, can everyone hear me? Yes. That's good. Um, well, that's a huge question. Um, <laughs> I mean, given, given we are some way away from the, the safe adoption and certification of autonomous vehicles, um, but yes, you're, you're right. I mean, basically, this is um, potentially adding another claimed benefit um, uh, of the development and adoption of kind of cabs and the and the medium to long term. I mean, the, the most obvious benefit would be uh, that autonomous trucks, delivery vehicles um, would allow you to, I suppose, operate the, the movements of, of freight and goods um, with, with much lower kind of manpower and, and um, human presence within, within the vehicles. Um, and therefore, if you're having to quarantine uh, uh, your um, your workforce, um, or indeed, as has already been said, if there's actually a shortage of drivers um, because of the because of the pandemic, then again, the the automation of the freight vehicle fleet is therefore having is going to have less of an impact. Um, now, that's not to say that it because it doesn't take human beings out of the out of the loop altogether because at each end, uh, whether it's the factory producing food, for example, or actually getting it into the supermarkets or wherever you need to deliver it, um, you would need to think about automating uh, those, those ends of the, 
um, of the trip as well. So it's not just the vehicle, actually, it's kind of loading, unloading, and, the, and the kind of the wider supply chain um, issues. But certainly that would be an obvious benefit in the current uh, situation. Um, the other benefit I can see, we've already had actually here in Dubai, uh, we, we've had emails from Kareem, which is the, um, which is the ride hailing firm. Um, so it's the equivalent of Uber, basically. Um, and we had emails uh, to, to all Kareem's users, basically saying how they disinfect the vehicles regularly, the drivers, if any drivers are sick or have come into contact with someone who may be infected, then they have to quarantine themselves and so on. Um, but again, kind of for essential movement within the city, um, where you have manned taxis, public transport and so on, then the driver or the staff in this, con in this context are a potential vulnerability and a source of infection and so on. So if you can take those people or reduce your reliance on these people, then again, I suppose it allows you to operate your essential public transport systems uh, much more reliably um, because you're not risking spreading the infection through the staff and you're also not subject to staff shortages um, if, if uh, staff have to be withdrawn um, from the network. So I think those, those are two kind of obvious things. Um, the other um, this, and this is a slightly wild card kind of um, uh, suggestion um, is if you did have an autonomous vehicle then an autonomous vehicle can act because it's kind of connected to multiple systems uh, you could actually I suppose have uh, systems within uh, a train or a bus or a taxi um, or a truck uh, where there were um, there were kind of human beings, whether they're drivers, whether they're staff, whether they're passengers, uh, and there might be some way of actually monitoring the uh, the environment or the kind of the cabin, if you like, um, to see whether actually people were coughing or whether people did have a temperature, um, and you might actually be able to scan people and therefore monitor um, whether or not they're showing certain symptoms, um, which then uh, you could then alert staff or, or medical staff or doctors um, to, to take the appropriate action. As I say, that's a bit of a wild card one and certainly in um, uh, a kind of a democratic free society, there's a whole load of um, privacy and um, kind of civil liberties issues around that last one, but nevertheless, it's something that could, from a technical point of view, could be considered. Um, so, so you know, those, those are just two or three thoughts off the top of my head in answer to the question. Um, it's a very good one. I mean, in, in the current cycle, we are looking uh, at the impacts of connected autonomous vehicles, the benefits and how transport agencies are responding uh, to how they're going to take the cab agenda forward. Um, I have absolutely no doubt that the coronavirus um, crisis will have an impact on those considerations in that debate. Thank you, Jonathan. And um, you answer actually partially um, some of the next question, but I'll, so I will address the next question to Valentina. Um, can road authorities introduce vehicles and people control systems with police authorities to monitor people's unauthorized movements on their roads using ITS, cameras, face recognition, and communicate this data to authorities and what privacy initiatives must be guaranteed? Well, it's a very, very good question actually, because up to now, uh, there, there is no clear initiative on uh, straight information given to this kind uh, of procedure, but what I can say that, of course, through ITS system, um, road operators and transport operator can help the government in order to to plan and support the decision making process. Uh, 
um, there is a lot of privacy issues and there are a lot of people now in the sector talking about this. Uh, but according also uh, with uh, the, the recent uh, regulation, it is not possible. Uh, there, is a, um, there is now a big discussion in Italy about the fact of trying to use uh, data from cell phones, for example, GPS coordinates, to track people when they're going outside of the room and they are not supposed to. Uh, in the note of Italy, because it was the most heated part, there was uh, this company that with region decided to try to develop this kind uh, of application in order to track people that are going outside and also to track uh, their symptoms. Um, but this is not an official one because the, the government did not officially uh, authorize it. Thank you, Valentina. Um, the next question would be to Yukio, uh, and it's uh, relative to the circulation through toll stations. Um, was circulation through toll stations free during, um, uh, you know, the height of the pandemic in Japan? Would you say again, please? <laughs> uh, More easy English, please. Uh, was the circulation, was, um, did Japan suspend collection of tolls during um, this period? Oh, so uh, they used the electric toll system for the toll, but the uh, uh, toll collector collection, just they stopped. Okay. Okay. Um, Saverio, in Italy, uh, how is a collection of tolls going on or was it suspended as well? No, it is not suspended uh, in the private uh, motorways uh, uh, networks. Uh, um, and as, as not, not all, so it's, uh, so it's not suspended. And Jose Manuel in Spain? In Spain is the same situation as in Italy, and as, I, and as I said before, we are encouraging people to pay not with physical money, but through the, through the other lanes for other ways of paying, credit card or technological systems. Okay. And uh, the next question is also for you, Jose Manuel. Could you please elaborate on measures for companies that have been granted suspension for construction work? Well, uh, uh, accompanying the, the decree of a state of alarm, there is a lot of economic measures thinking of the companies who uh, must, must stop their activity in many sectors. Regarding the construction sector, the idea is if you must stop, I'm going to pay you several concept uh, salaries or, or, the, or the manager, uh, how much is costing you to maintain the guarantees or the insurance. And also if you have some facility that you have to pay a rental for them, that's what I'm going to pay you, me the state. And if you need more time for finishing the work, I'm going to give you without any kind of penalty. That is more or less in this moment, in this moment, the idea. But if you contract, do you want to stop by yourself? That's your question. You want to stop? Okay. I give you the permission to stop if it's you're necessary, but I'm not going to pay you anything. That's why surely many people is asking now, please government, tell me to stop. And that's the question in this moment. Thank you, Jose Manuel. And the next one would be for Saverio. How does the police on roads and highways monitor and enforce the quarantine procedures? And are they successful in their endeavors? <laughs> it's, uh, hello, can you hear me? Uh, yes, we can. Okay. Um, I can see you that now recently, it was two days ago, um started to the government started to have more uh, uh, more 
uh, um, heavy rules to to control movement. Uh, as you know very well, um, all, uh, one fundamental measure is stay at home. Um, so there were uh, very heavy um, measures for for who is going, uh, is, is mo moving uh, uh, without uh, um, a, a reasonable or uh, essential uh, an essential reason. Uh, or uh, and you can be arrested if you are in quarantine and you are moving uh, um, from your home. Uh, how this is successful, um, I cannot say at the moment because uh, uh, the reduction of traffic is heavy, uh, mainly in the urban area. Uh, mobility is quite it's quite uh, zero. Uh, mobility, not, not uh, normal mobility. Only people who are uh, who want to move, who have to move for for health, for work, or for uh, for f uh, purchasing food are allowed to move, and everybody are strongly um, uh, informed that they can move only um, at the one week, one 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 time for a, for a week. Policy is making control. And many uh, many um, uh, uh, procedures were uh, many, many many are under under and also will be processed for for their movement. But uh, we are not an estimation uh, of the eff eff effectiveness of these uh, measures. We only want it here in Italy. Uh, we want to stop all activities that are really not essential for the moment. This is the situation. And I, I did mute myself, so I'm sorry. So uh, thank you, Severio. Um, and um, I have a general question um, that uh, seems to be, this is, uh, uh, this is uh, really general and it needs a global response. And um, I, I hope that, uh, you know, uh, people are encouraged, uh, you know, through the participation of this. And the question that we have, Patrick, is relative to national plans versus regional plans. And I will ask this to uh, our three panelists, uh, Jose Manuel, Yukio, and Saverio, whether they had to deal, um, you know, uh, with both national and regional plans. So Jose Manuel. Well, I, as, I, as I said before, in Spain, we had declared the alarm alert is one of the three levels we have in our constitutional, our constitution, national constitution, and all the power are in the national government. So the president of the government and the four ministers are the main authorities and all the regional plans, whatever is under the orders of them. Of course, I'm sure that after this pandemic we finish, we'll think on what has happened and we'll get the best lesson and organize better for surely uh, who knows when a new pan pandemic will come. But in this moment, uh, if, if. excuse me? Uh, we start hearing the rest of the piano. Sorry. And, and I was telling now uh, we're trying to keep uh, as calm as possible and not because it can create sometimes uh, political disagreements that is not the moment to talk about. And Yukio? Cristo, could you say it again, please? Uh, did you have to deal uh, relative to national plans versus the regional plans in Japan? And what are the, uh, what differences have you seen um, from the national perspective and regional perspective when it comes to road administrations? Uh, all the, all the uh, direction come from the uh, national government and the uh, local government follows the uh, national government and also the uh, uh, our highway administrator follows the uh, uh, national, uh, the, that direction. But the, uh, in case of the uh, regional number of the uh, infection changes, some changes in the uh, local the, uh, directions. So now, mm, yeah, so road administrat 
uh, road administrator, just follow the uh, national directions and also the uh, local direction, both. Okay. Thank may you, Yuki. May I add something, uh, Christos? Please. Yes. Uh, uh, our government, for example, for massive transportation of, of people, the, he gives criteria, big orders around, for example, reduction of, of, of uh, travels and so, but in the cities, in the mid cities, they have to study well, uh, the daily ongoing, of course, because they are in place. So we try to coordinate the, the national instructions and then the local reality that is always very complex to understand sometimes. Thank you, Jose Manuel. And Saverio, um, national versus regional in Italy? Yes, I can see you that uh, uh, at the national level, uh, uh, smart working uh, uh, is now a priority for, for all the activities, all the companies, all the administration. Uh, this, as I said in my previous presentation, uh, these uh, um, so these uh, needs uh, need uh, needs uh, the implementation of a new regulation and a new organization um, and of course uh, and also to guarantee the essential uh, uh, functions that uh, uh, can uh, uh, can cons that to 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 develop the services. Uh, that's why, uh, for example, at uh, operational level that is on the ground, uh, people are reduced at the minimum. Um, while uh, at the same at the same time in the operative uh, center, uh, the control center, they are fully uh, active, uh, fully operational, uh, the, and uh, and uh, and also um, uh, a plan a plan for evacuation of this uh, control center are planned in the sense that if uh, there will be the necessity to evacuate uh, a control center because we have a, a for each each uh, uh, region we have 20 region in italy in each center um, and and, and uh, can be um, supported uh, and this, um, the service that uh, uh, this center provide in a region can be um, uh, um, performed by another center in case that it, it, it will be, it can be evacuated for health reason. Uh, reason. Uh, this is the situation at the moment for the ANAS company at, and uh, this is, uh, which is the road uh, national uh, administration in Italy. Thank you, Saverio. And um, my next and last question, uh, you, uh, and thank you everyone for the excellent question. So uh, I, I've saved my um, own question last for Patrick. Um, and uh, Patrick, if you can tell us more about uh, uh, PRC's plans to be providing relevant information on the actions taken um, by road administration, again, relative to COVID-19, um, it would really be great, and then I will turn it over for to you uh, to conclude the, the webinar and discussion forum. Thank you, Christos, and thank you everyone for the great, great questions. Uh, well, obviously, no one has the one and uh, magic uh, silver bullet uh, answer. So, what we are doing at PIAC is facilitate uh, sharing practice between everyone so that maybe you can get inspiration from others and some measure that has worked in Italy maybe would work would work in your country or maybe not but it's likely that it would work and at least you may want to try it and discuss it with your colleagues and peers and with your decision makers but what we're trying to do at PR is to organize webinars such as this one today and we have planned more in the future uh, Christos, we had not planned this, but this is a great uh, intro introduction to the conclusion, I, I would say. Uh, so again, the, the next steps for us, uh, we are planning further PR webinars. I cannot tell you exactly when and what the topics would be yet. We want you to learn from this first one today to see whether there was interest. Uh, the next, on, probably next week, there will be a new one where we will discuss on the actions and experience of road authorities in China, the actions taken by the USA road authorities, 
and also learn from the private sector perspective in the Gulf area, and also share material from the PR committee on rural network operations and intelligent transport systems. We are also considering webinars in French and webinars in Spanish for us to be able to uh, get the message or the ideas across. Uh, let me get back to this. This is the contact, these are the contact details of every one of the uh, presenter and speaker today. Uh, you are invited to contact them if you want and also to contact uh, us at pr.org uh, if you want. No problem about it. This is really, really welcome. And I'm incredibly thankful to this team of uh, dedicated uh, colleagues. Let me remind you as well of this disclaimer. What was discussed today is not, is not necessarily best practice. We don't know yet, but this is practice that is trialed here or trialed there. So I would like to thank you all for your time uh, and your, your, your attention. We don't have time. This is just to pick the face of Valentina, our committee chair for ITS. Jonathan Spear, uh, from a, uh, based in Dubai, from our committee as well. And Christos, who Christos is on the right, not on the left. Uh, Christos uh, has organized uh, and moderated uh, the question uh, session, among others. Thank you to all. This will be the end of uh, this session. And I see that the discussion and the questions were really extremely interesting. So we will probably try and organize a webinar where we have even more time for, for questions. So thank you all. And this is the end of this uh, webinar and probably see you next week. Thank you very much.